this is Nina Curley of WAMDA Media. I'm here with Fazli Anwar, the founder of Vouch Hears, a location-based deal finder based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Fazli, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, so tell us about Vouch Hears. Uh, what inspired you to start this model in Kuala Lumpur? Well, basically, um, at that time, my partner and I, we saw the group buying trend kind of taking over the world. And we figured out that you know, there'll be a set of merchants out there who can't really adopt that model for various reasons. And we set out on this conquest to kind of just figure out like how could we connect those brands, which are you know, equally good or sometimes better than group buying brands, to the end consumers and get them you know, a bit of piece of that pie. And uh, we eventually worked on several models and we figured out that location-based advertising uh, was a really good fit because where we're from in Malaysia is very different from, from the US kind of ecosystem where a lot of business is still traditional. So having that tech element for the mobile face of it, but with an underlying traditional business being advertising under it, made a lot of sense. And um, when we tested this out with a few merchants, uh, it, was, it was a good reception. And, and ever since, we've just been you know, continuously reiterating, depend, depending on the market feedback, depending on the merchant feedback. And, uh, and that's where we are today. So how did you get your first set of retailers online? Any tips or tricks for persuading retailers to get on board with the Deal Finder app? I guess my biggest tip would be uh, just don't give up. I mean, we, we were at it for a couple of months and it was really, really tough. You know, uh, essentially we're trying to sell them a solution. And, and our biggest mistake in the beginning was that we, we positioned it against Google AdWords, online advertising, um, you know, with like, and we were totally clueless at the fact that a lot of these merchants weren't even on uh, online advertising. And, um, and eventually we actually locked out the first merchant that we got was because uh, I was just having lunch with a friend who worked in a company that, that was in a way related to a, a, a merchant. And we kind of showed him the idea, the, the working prototype, and said, well, this is, this is excellent. And it's just purely luck that we got a meeting the, that same afternoon with the CEO. And he said that that's awesome. And, um, and it just rolled on from there. And then along the way, we figured out that you know, we wouldn't be measured against online advertising or Google AdWords or Facebook ads, but we were being measured against you know, traditional media, how much it would cost to run a print uh, in the newspaper or a 20 second spot on the TV. So um, as we went along, we learned a lot more on, on how to really communicate to merchants. There was a lot of cold calling in the beginning, uh, but one relationship, uh, when it does work out, you build on that because the retail space, essentially, I think in every market is very small. That a lot of the players know each other. So warm intros from one client to another kind of help us uh, you know, propel forward. And were you able to sort of peer pressure them by saying, you know, look, your competitor is, is getting traffic with us, and so you might want to think about this? That's, that's, I mean, that's a fine line there, and we thread very carefully. Um, we essentially, because it's location-based advertising, Malaysia has a very, uh, very much a mall-based culture when it comes to shopping. So it was a natural fit in the product that uh, when we did approach a certain retailer, we, we could go to his neighbors because we would drive a lot of marketing on the, on the consumer end to kind of drive traffic to that mall. And so when they saw that their neighbors were on, on the system, you know, they, they wanted to be highlighted too, they wanted to be able to get on the system. So I guess uh, by happenstance, it, it worked out for us that that, you know, that form of peer pressure did kind of, uh, was added on to the business model here. Yeah? I see. And can you just share with us some of the demographics about users in Malaysia? What do you think are the biggest differences between this market and that? Well, uh, to be very honest, I've only been in the UAE for a couple of days. Uh, from what I've seen, I think um, we have a very, in Malaysia, we have a very uh, prolific internet penetration rate. Uh, a lot of people are mobile. I, I tend to say that we all live on Facebook in Malaysia. So, uh, and Malaysia does happen to be the most active uh, per capita demographic on Facebook. So um, it made a lot of sense to be able to tap into social media and especially like mobile media to be able to communicate with them because people are just glued to their smartphones in Malaysia. So that's one trend we kind of like piggybacked on. Um, I guess down here in the UAE, uh, from what I've seen, the, the, consumer, uh, the consumer here is a lot more discerning. Right? I, I think they're, they're a lot more picky about what they, what they choose to use. And, um, but one of the similarities is that everybody here is very superficial as, as they are uh, in Asia. Right? We're very concerned about what we use and how our friends see us uh, based on the kind of apps we use, the services that we subscribe to. So um, there are similarities that I think both regions share, uh, but I think that kind of stickiness to, uh, to mobile technology in Malaysia right now uh, is, is a big uh, difference maker right now for us. Makes sense. Do you think location-based deals are the future of daily deals? 
Well, I think I like the daily deal model. I'm a bit skeptical um, where it'll be in five years. I don't think it's self-sustainable. Some people make the argument that when, um, you know, when one SME goes out of business, uh, another one will come. So it's always replenishing the, the merchant side. But uh, at the end of the day, I think what merchants really want out of it is loyalty. So they want to continuously progress towards a system where you know, I would communicate to consumer X, but in a week's time, I would be able to know that consumer X came back to me. And so I think that would be the next iteration. And I think that's where you, you can see this from Groupon and Living Social that they were uh, kind of experimenting with uh, location-based deals. And, and I think because they were so big on the daily deal space, they couldn't afford to pivot into the business, uh, the, the location-based business. So I think that's one thing that we have on, on the table that uh, would be a bit more difficult for, for bigger companies to pivot to. Yeah. Any plans to expand outside of Malaysia? Well, we're always looking. Um, we're probably... Uh, are going to take it in stride. We're looking at the Southeast Asian market before I guess we look elsewhere just because the demographics share a lot of um, the same cultural and, um, and shopping behaviors. Um, I mean the UAE here is like, is, is, I mean I was just at Dubai Mall uh, yesterday and I thought wow it would be great if we could be here. Uh, but I guess it's gonna t we're just going to see in time whether there's a good fit for, the, for our product here. Yeah. Well thanks for chatting with us at WAMDA. Thank you so much for having me.